Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 41, the Gospel of Mark being the 41st book of the Bible. Keep silent before me, God says, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. I'm sorry, people. My, my vision is a little cloudy. Let us come near together to judgment. And to judgment. In Luke, I mean, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, he says, Let us come, let us meet, let us get together, and let us look at your sins. Though they be as scarlet, they should be white as snow. He's saying, Let's get together, let's have judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east. Called him to his foot and stand up. Gave, gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword and driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them, passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. So unknown path. Who has wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning, which would be from Adam, I the Lord, the first, and with the last, Alpha and Omega, I am He. So, <clears throat> ask the Jehovah Witnesses, is Jesus the Alpha and Omega? They say no, they are violating scriptures. All right, if he, if, he's, if he is the Alpha and Omega, and the Bible says he is, Isaiah 41 says the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah is the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the Isles saw it, Zephaniah 3.8, and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near, and came. Oh, the, earth, the ends of the earth. That would include the North America, Central America, South America that God knew about. All the way to China, all the way around the globe. He's very read that the earth is round. So, the isle saw it and feared, and the ends of the earth were afraid, drew near, and came. They helped everyone his neighbor. Everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. All right. So the carpenter there's a carpenter encouraged the goldsmith two trades and he that smoothed with the hammer him that smote the anvil saying it is ready for the soldering that's where you take <clears throat> two pieces of metal together you join it with a liquid metal and he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. Jeremiah 10.4 But thou, Israel, you know why they fastened it with nails? <clears throat> what's his name? Micaiah? Malik? What's his name in Judges? When he had a god, and Dan came and stole it? You gotta make it so they don't steal it. You can't steal your god, that don't look good. That don't say much for your God. But thou, Israel, art my servant. All, right, all these nations, all these people, they make these, these, these graven images. They got to nail it, which we already talked about last night. And to set aside the but, Israel, art my God's servant. Of all the nations, how many are there? There are at least 12 continents. God chose one. And he, Abraham, being called out, one man. And when he called Israel as a nation, as a group of people, they were slaves 
in Egypt. They weren't even in a homeland. They didn't even have such a homeland. It was told to them Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they had not had it. And the ones that were in Egypt never been there. You know, Moses took Israel to a place that he never knew where it was. All right, he knew as far as away as Mount Sinai, Jethro's feet, sheep. But he didn't know the rest of the way to the promised land. He relied on God. Jacob, whom I have chosen, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, no Ishmael at all. The seed of Abraham, my friend. Look at that. My friend. Abraham, you read what Abraham did? God's a gracious, wonderful God. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof, who was Abraham? Who was he? What was he? And said unto thee, Thou art my servant. Now, was Abraham a chief man where he was? Was he among them? And out of them he said, Abraham, or it was Abram, you're my servant. Move on. Separate yourself. Get away from your homeland. Get away from your, your family. Take your wife and go. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. So they would, you know, you got to be chosen of God. Yeah, we're all chosen. And I chose to be elected to God by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Abraham didn't have to go. He had free will. God said, Abram, I choose you. And Abram did not walk, did not go. Okay, he found someone else. Fear thou not. Now he's speaking to Israel. He's speaking to Abraham. I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. How's that? I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to take care of you. And I'll give you spiritual muscles. That's what you need when you're going to start out the walk of God. Because all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. That went that went just as much as the Old Testament saints as it does today for the saint, Christian saints. Once Abraham said, yeah, I'll stand up with you, God. I'll walk with you. Satan said, what? I'll show you how far you walk. I'll show you what you'll do. Right? Yeah, Isaac, I'll show you what Isaac, you know. Behold, all they that were increased against thee, and they were, everyone today is against thee. The Jews shall be ashamed and confronted. So don't worry, the Palestinians, the Iraqis, and the Iranians and Jordanians and all those over there that hate Israel, all the Middle Easterns, they will be ashamed. They will be ashamed. They that strive with thee shall perish. I will curse them that curse thee, and I will bless them that bless thee. You know when Jesus comes by and that, that sword goes out of his mouth, will strike dead everyone that has taught the Jew wrong? Who has tried to kill the Jew, has tried to assault the Jew, you know, Naaman, the Jew's enemy. You know what Naaman did? He built gallows to kill Jews. He had a set date of the king's command that the Jews would be killed. Do you know what happened? Naaman was set to those gallows. The people that hated the Jews were killed on that day they were supposed to be killing the Jews.
You don't mess with the Jew. You pray for him. You love him. You witness to him. But they are also, the Bible says that Paul writes to it, they are enemies of the gospel, but you pray for them. You love them. And they will, listen, they're going to get their just desserts, desserts too. There's a place, I don't know if we're going to read it today or if I've read it before. They're going to get double the punishment. And that's Jacob's trouble. God will deal with them too. God ain't going to let them get away. As much as he's going to let the sinner get away. Thou shalt seek them, shall not find them. The people have been against them. Even them that contend with thee, argue with you. They that war against thee shall be nothing, drop in a bucket, as a thing of naught, zero, nada. Who cares? What are they? No name, dead, in hell, burning. For I, the Lord thy God, Israel. So what God do you need? What God are you to trust? The one that is the God of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. How's that? So if he's holding the right hand of Israel and walking, that means God is holding the right hand of Israel with the left hand. If I'm correct. Now, if he's holding Israel with the left hand, their right hand, who does the Bible say is at the right hand of God? The Lord Jesus Christ. Saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. You know, he's helping the Jews today. Any Jew that can come close to the gospel and, and believe and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll help them. I believe a Jew that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior today gets even more of a benefit than any Gentile. Because they are God's people. Even though there's neither Jew or Gentile, Romans chapter 10, if that Jew were to believe, well, boy, I tell you, not only is to believe Christ as the as a savior, but also as his Messiah. And then he's killed and dead as part of the family. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Oh, that's what will speak of a person. And ye men of Israel, for I will help thee. He keeps telling them, I'm going to help you. They need help. Saith the Lord. And thy Redeemer, I bought you under the Lamb, the Exodus. I bought you. Under the cloud, the Red Sea, I bought you. Behold, uh, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make thee a new, sharp, threshing instrument. And that's spoken throughout scriptures. Having teeth. Ouch. He's going to hurt. Thou shalt thresh the morning. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. And beat them small. And shall make the hills as chow. Thou shalt fan them. And the wind shall carry them away. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. And shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. That's not, to, I don't think that's talking about cross. I think that's talking about the evil, wicked men that are against them. I think he's using the, the threshing floor as an illustration. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Now, I don't understand that passage, if the second advent, or the tribulation where they got to buy water and receive the mark. Lamentation says, 
we have to pay for our water. You know what you know what they say Sail of Petra has? It has carved out cisterns to hold water. So when they gotta buy their own water from the Antichrist, receive a mark or, or thirst. And those that choose to thirst and run down to where God has prepared them a place, He will give them water in those cisterns. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. And that's pretty much the Alapitra. It's high places and it's, it's valley. The fountains in the midst of the valleys, I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Now, this may be the desert land. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shittop tree. What is that? I don't know. Maybe it's a brand new tree the Lord will come up with. And the myrtle. Yeah, if you forgive me, my eyes are. And the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree. I don't know if a fir tree will survive in the desert today. I doubt it. And the pine and the box tree together. So this is not a this a time that you know okay go over there and start planting these trees right now no it's got to be a reference to millennium that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created it I think these trees are out of place in the wilderness I think and he has to make water and pools and reservoirs in eighteen. Because there is none. And the people are of dying of thirst in verse 17. Or would have died of thirst. And God's making waters. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. That matches uh, Isaiah 118. Come, let us reason together. Let them bring them forth. Your reason is, and show us what shall happen. Us, the Trinity. God says, Come to me, show us what's going to happen. Let them show the former thing, what they be, that we, the Trinity, may consider them and know the latter end of them and declare us things for to come. I mean, come on, tell me what's going to happen, he says. Tell me what has happened. Come on. You're so important. Tell me. Show the things that are to come hereafter that we, the Trinity, may know that ye are gods. Yea, do good or do evil, that we, the Trinity, may be dismayed and behold it together. God's getting a little sarcastic here. Come on. Show who you are. What are you? Let me, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit go, wow, oh, ooh. There's a passage in the Bible that says that God, you know, started from the end and worked his way to the beginning, knowing the end thereof before the start. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination he that chooseth you. Do nothing. Yet. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come. From the rising of the sun shall he call upon my name, and he shall come upon princes, as upon mortar, and as the potter treadeth clay. Who has declared from the beginning? Who? That we may know. Adam? What did Adam declare? Noah declared, but he got it from God. 
Enoch said prophesied in the second cup, but he got it from God. And before time that we may say, he is righteous. We, there's a, there's a trinity again. Trinity's all through this. You imagine it, you know, God's, being, God's being so sarcastic here. He's saying, here we are sitting here. Oh, what do you guys think? And he's talking to himself. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God Jesus Christ. He's saying, what, what do you think of this guy? He is righteous. Who do you think Jesus Christ and God and the Holy Spirit are going to say that about? No one. Absolutely no one. Because I am not righteous. The only righteousness I have today is, is Jesus Christ. Now, there is one person above all persons to be one person in the flesh like this. It can only be Jesus Christ. Yea, there is none that showeth. Yea, no one comes up to us. You know, you can't stand in the presence of God as a human. He told Moses, no one can see my face, at least they die. The only one that can see God's face, now get this, is the angels, the cherubim, and Satan. Job 1 and 2. If we were, uh, the Bible says we're seated in heavenly places, but we're also going to get a glorified body before we meet God. When the rapture happens, Jesus, we, get, we meet together in the clouds. We meet Jesus in the air. We are at the judgment seat of Christ. We are been we be judged. We earn crowns or we don't or we lose crowns. Then we go to heaven and meet God. We can't meet God in our soul goes, but not us totally. You can't stand in the presence of God as a sinner. Yea, thou there is none that showeth, yea. There is none that declares. No man can tell God without the Bible. The only thing man can tell you outside of a Bible, if there was no Bible, the only thing man could tell you is you're going to die. When? I don't know. But you're going to die. A guy can, a guy can hold a gun to your head and say, you're going to die. I'm going to pull my trigger. And he can't even say when that's going to happen because that trigger may pull and the bullet may not come out. The bullet may lodge into the brain and still allow the person to live. You can't even say that. Yea, there is none that declares. Yea, there is none that heareth your word. What are your words? You know how many words are not recorded of Adam? How many words were, weren't recorded of John? Weren't recorded of Paul? Won't, weren't recorded of Isaiah? There's a lot of words that we don't ever read about. Yet, yeah, but the Bible says in Matthew, Every idle word thou shalt speak, thou shalt give it account. You know, a lot of people who listen, they don't listen to you. They don't hear. Christian, if you think you're, you know, you're, you've got something really important to say, <coughs> you take what is really important to say, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you take it to dying lost men, and you see how much they'll listen to you. Very few will. The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them. And I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. There's the gospel again. Good news. For, be, for I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor, that when I asked, God speaking, when I asked them, could answer a word. No one can answer God. You know, he asked Job questions Job couldn't answer. I sought me a man of a thousand, I couldn't find one. Behold, they are all vanity. 
That's it. Or all have sin come to you, you're all vanity. So you are that's what man is vanity. Their works are nothing. You can't pay your salvation with works. Their molten images are wind and confusion. And what a way to close a chapter. Your images are wind, nothing. You can't see wind. Wind has no source. And confusion. You think it's God, but it's not God. 